Health is the chief analyst of uh, Kairos, the energy uh, analytics company, uh, also a fellow at the Columbia Centre on Global Energy Policy. Good to have you with us, sir. Th yeah. Let's just deal with this price business. Saudi produces at two to three, right. but needs a good 70 to 80 because of its internal economics. The US shale producers only care about profitability, mm -hmm. and they're producing at what, 35, 40? It depends. Depends. Some of them do, some of them are higher. It's a range of prices. So you're going to have some reorganization, some restructuring of the, of the shale play uh, in the U.S. as a result of these price pressures. The companies that are more profitable will perform better, obviously. Those that, are, that were already under pressure before the price collapse will experience more stress. But is there any way, I mean, there's, I, I guess under antitrust rules, there's no way that the U.S. producers can agree to cut back collectively? No, no, but the invisible hand of the market can do that. Exactly. Right. And that's different to OPEC, where they make a decision. So let's go to look at the price today. 30, whatever it is, we're, we're at 30, 30 and change uh, in the mid-30s on, on the price today. Who's really hurting? Everybody's hurting. The question really is... Really hurting. Everybody's really hurting. I think maybe Russia is hurting less because it's a little bit more diversified. Its prices are, are ruble-denominated lower price in a way. The ruble varies with the oil price. So in ruble terms, Boris Nemtsov used to say the oil price is always the same in Russia. Uh, but I think you have to look at the longer term as well. So when the dust settles on all this, the low-cost producers will, will, will win. Uh, and the low-cost producers really are the Saudis and the Russians at the end of the day. They're the low-cost producers, but, but they're the ones who get clobbered they are. every time. Right. Shale... Obviously, I remember the last time we went up to 100, whatever, and then prices came down to 30. Shale became... Shale made itself more productive right. to the point where the US is the largest producer. We're going to see some of that again. I think we're going to see the same episode of restructuring, cost efficiency improvements, uh, improvements in technology. Can I ask you the question yeah. I've asked all our guests uh, in some shape or form? How responsible was it of the Saudis to not just accept the Russians and work around it, but to launch this price war with Asian discounts and production. How responsible was that or irresponsible? So we've done some modelling of the, of the oil market using game theory. And what we found is that it makes sense for OPEC to keep the price on the roller coaster, to, to push the price up like crazy and to then drop the price like a stone. That makes perfect sense to do it from now and from time to time on the cyclical basis. Uh, because when the price goes up, the competition becomes ineffective. Everybody wants to invest at the same time. The cost of oil services goes up. Producers become very ineffective, very you know, wasting money and resources. When the price collapses, then they're ripe for cleanup. Uh, they, they get really hurt. So for OPEC to maintain the ideal market share, optimize its, its revenues, it makes perfect sense for them to go up and down, to, to surprise the market. I think what was unexpected this, this time is the magnitude of the price collapse. And the coronavirus, of course. Right. Good to see you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you.